One of the fundamental actions we all have to really get a handle on is that of the anti-inflammatory. Uh, because inflammation is such a characteristic uh, process in not just in illness, but in the body's response to pathology and its attempts to heal it. Now, sometimes the inflammation is inappropriate as an autoimmune disease, but sometimes it, it's very, very important. Turns out that we have a range of different ways of herbally um, approaching inflammation. The first thing is, is that the, the practitioner has to decide if they want to stop the inflammation. It's not always the right thing to do. But um, this is a place where the various categories of anti-inflammatory are actually biochemically differentiated. This plant, meadowsweet, um, and this one is just about to open the flowers. The flowers of this plant are just beautiful, and the, the aroma is, is uplifting and, and indescribable, but indescribable. But it's one of those oils that can't be extracted well. So if at all, I think that I've forgotten what the actual issue is. But um, I think that if, if somebody could make a, an essential oil of meadowsweet so it didn't break down, um, it would be the most widely used um, fragrance oil going, but oh well. This is an example of a salicylate containing plant. Plants which contain um, salicin and its various uh, botanical relatives, all of which were the core material that aspirin was developed from. But I need to say, aspirin is not from plants. Aspirin is a ch chemically manipulated form of something that's in plants. Meadowsweet, willow bark, the poplars, um, the birches, the viburnums, in fact, are, are rich sources of salicylate anti-inflammatories, which are very effective for hard tissue inflammation, bones, connective tissue, um, mus well, muscles aren't hard, but they work well in that sort of inflammation. They're not good at all and possibly contraindicated for inflammation of soft tissue, um, the stomach, um, the intestinal tract. This sort of um, anti-inflammatory used at high dose to try and get rid of um, inflammation in, in the small intestine would probably make it worse. So you have to be careful about that choice. However, the amount of salicylate in this plant, just applying pharmacology to it, this should cause gastritis. This should make stomach ulcers many times worse. Um, but it doesn't. You can actually use this to stop bleeding in the stomach because it's also very useful astringent. And there has to be something else going on in this plant where it has a specific prostaglandin interaction. So. Um, you're moderating one of the effects of the um, salicylates while keeping other effects of the salicylates. Because not other salicylate containing plants have that stomach sensitivity. Um, they can actually really make things worse. It's difficult to get a handle on this, but aspirin was developed because the natural form, the salicin, was uh, really irritant to the stomach. Many times more irritating than, than aspirin. But so, this is used um, sports injuries, arthritic aches and pains. Um, by itself, it won't cure arthritis. Nothing by itself is going to do that, but it's a major part of approaches to that sort of inflammatory disease. Um, but as it's an astringent, this is also one of uh, the primary anti-diarrhea herbs. Very useful in diarrhea in children. Um, Everybody should be growing this. The only problem with growing it is that it needs lots of water. So um, anybody with a tendency to um, bony inflammation or muscular aches and pains, this willow bark and the other ones I mentioned, the salicylate containing anti-inflammatories have got a lot to offer. But there are other sorts of anti-inflammatories. Um, the volatile oil containing group, um, chamomile, Sage. Time.
lavender. Lemon balm. All of those oils, or containing plants, will tend to reduce inflammation on soft tissue. So they're the group of anti-inflammatories to think about for um, digestive system inflammatory processes. They're, they can be very useful there. I would never use, personally as a clinician, would never use the oil from the plant. I'd use the whole plant extract because of all the other things. However, not all volatile oil-containing plants are anti-inflammatory. Um, rosemary, for example, contains anti-inflammatory oils, but it contains some others as well, which make it a bit too inflammatory, especially for people with, on the skin, for people with um, blonde hair. Um, we then have another group of anti-inflammatories, and uh, licorice and wild yam would be very good examples there. These are plants which contain uh, particular molecular shapes, chemical shapes of saponins and triterpenoids, but in this case it's more the saponins, which are used by the adrenal glands and, and other parts of the body as chemical precursors for the body to produce its own anti-inflammatory hormones, more, more than um, it's able to do ordinarily. So in certain inflammatory diseases, the body is really struggling to do something about it. Licorice and wild yam can help it respond. So they're very useful in the autoimmune diseases uh, where a normal inflammatory process, and because it's normal, it's difficult to block it, um, is happening in the wrong place at the wrong time. So it's totally inappropriate and the body gets very confused, putting it simply. Um, so we have the hormonally based anti-inflammatories, which are not going to do much for sports injuries or digestive system things, but the, um, the, the chronic long-standing and very, these days very, very common autoimmune conditions, they're useful in, in reducing those inflammations. Antispasmodics are herbs which relax the muscles of the body, the voluntary muscles of the body. And um, there are two ways to do that. You can either relax the brain and the central nervous system enough so everything sort of downstream relaxes. Um, but that wouldn't be very useful if, say, you were treating an airline pilot who had tight shoulders and you want, he wanted to relax, she wanted to relax the shoulders, but you didn't want to sedate them because you were going to be flying in their plane. Um, you can't use the nervines to relax muscles that way. Um, so luckily we have a group of plants which gently relax the voluntary muscles. Now in orthodox medicine, prescription antispasmodics are intense, powerful, um, serious chemistry. These are different. Um, they're gentle, mild, and usually effective, but there are no bad issues to think about. The best ones for ordinary usage are going to be um, members of the genus of Viburnum. Uh, cramp bark, um, well, cramp bark's the best one. Um, there are a number of plants like that. You can also use um, oils as a topical massage, which are going to relax the, the muscles. So through herbs such as cramp bark internally and massage techniques externally, you can do a lot of antispasmodic work. Very easy, very effective. If you need much stronger antispasmodic muscle relaxation, the herb of choice is going to be kava. If you get the dose right, you might be able to relax the muscles without um, changing the person's state of mind too much. But it's the ideal herb to use if the person's in muscle pain and they're not needing to go to work. They're just going to stay at home and, and watch Marx Brothers movies. Kava is ideal there because you relax the muscles and they'll be laying down smiling. And why not? Why not? Um, so all the relaxing nervines might at the right dose be muscle relaxing. The viburnums, an equivalent 
oils are going to be muscle relaxing without being centrally brain relaxing. And that, that's a useful juggle.